Good morning. Well, here we are. We made it. <laughs> the last verses of the Book of Mormon. Um, they are verses 29 through 34. And as you can expect, he's just wrapping up. Um, so let's, let's get into it, as they say. Um, so in verses 31 through 33, it talks about strengthening thy stakes and enlarging thy borders, coming unto Christ and being perfected in him and denying yourselves of un all ungodliness. And it gives a quote by Bruce R. McConkie. And yeah, I think I'll read it. It's short enough. The gospel cause commands every man to take up his cross and follow him who carries his own cross, who carried his own cross to Gol Golgotha. That is, the saints are to carry the cross of service and consecration, the cross of devotion and obedience. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me, our Lord said. And now for a man to take up his cross is to deny himself all ungodliness and every worldly lust, and keep my commandments. Uh, so there you go. Oh. Um, so then it says, The invitation to come unto Christ and be perfected in him. And it gives a quote by Russell M. Nelson saying, Moroni taught how to gain this glorious objective. His instruction stands in any age, as an antidote for depression and a prescription for joy, I echo his plea, come unto Christ and be perfected in him and deny yourselves of all ungodliness. Love God with all your might, mind, and strength. Then ye may be perfected in him, holy and without spot. And I think what they're, all that, what Moroni and President Nelson and Elder McConkie are all trying to say is... These, these last bits that, that he's writing on the page, this is the important thing. The, he wants us to remember that if we just come unto Christ and deny all ungodliness, then everything will be right. Not easy or fair or anything of that nature, but our lives will be on the right course and, um, Things will work out in the end. Um, and then, who is it? Pinnegar, Richard J. Allen. He gives a, a memory. And he tells a story about how he had a friend make him a, he calls it a tetrahedron, um, but I'm going to call it a pyramid with four equal sides out of wood and he uses it as a teaching aid as um, the fourfold mission of the Book of Mormon. I'm not going to read all of it because it's very flourishy, you know. But anyways, the fourfold mission of the Book of Mormon is first he exhorts us to remember how merciful the Lord has been unto the children of men from the creation of Adam even down until the time that ye shall receive these things and ponder it in your hearts. Next, he emphasizes the need for us all daily in the here and now to remember our covenant obligations. Continuing, he holds out eternal hope for those who are willing to deny themselves of all ungodliness and fill themselves with the love of God. Finally, none of this magnificent plan of redeeming virtue would be possible. Moroni confirms, except it should be empowered by and extended through the shedding of the blood of Christ, which is the covenant, which is in the covenant of the Father unto the redeeming of your sins, that ye become holy without spot. So there's that. And then, in verse 34, And now I bid unto all a farewell. Which, when reading it last night, I was kind of sad. I've never spent this much time reading the Book of Mormon. Like, I'd read the Book of Mormon. Um, i do, like, quick studies where either I read it in 90 days or I read it in two months or 
you know, something quicker than that, I think. I can't remember, but I've never spent every single day of the year re reading one Book of Mormon. Like, I'd read a chapter a day, and so I'd get done, and then I'd restart. And I've never spent this much time in one reading of the Book of Mormon. So when he was bidding farewell, it was quite sad. I was like, oh, this is it. This is it. And where he says... I soon go to the re I soon go to rest in the paradise of God until my spirit and body shall again unite and I am brought forth triumphant through the air to meet you before the pleasing bar of the great Jehovah the eternal judge of both the quick and the dead never have I felt a kinship with Moroni before when reading that line being like oh I'm going to see him I'm going to meet him it's okay I'm going to I'm going to see my friend Moroni, you know. I don't know, it was very an interesting a special experience, I guess you could say. Anyways. So it says, as a final question of conscience, can we ask ourselves, do we accept the exhortation of the prophets of God and follow their counsel? How can we improve in this regard? So just some pondering thoughts. Um, you know, in this last chapter, he's saying, you know, Ask the Holy Spirit if this book is true. Um, do these things. He's giving us some exhortations. And the question is, do we accept the exhortation of the prophets? How can we improve? Are we doing our duty? You know, what do we need to improve on? And then it gives some concluding thoughts. And I'm not going to read them all, but I am going to read the part that I like. In the final pages of the Book of Mormon, we are presented with a banquet of spiritual nourishment, how to search for happiness in the light of Christ, how to foster faith, hope, and charity in our lives, how to become like little children who in their innocence are saved through the atonement, how to know the truth of all things through the Spirit, and how to come unto Christ and be perfected in Him. This wisdom is the essence of the gospel of Jesus Christ in a succinct and illuminating summary of truth. What more can be said? So I liked that. It was a nice, a nice sum up. I'm, I'm kind of sad it's over. Like for the past two months, I was kind of like, oh my goodness, I've been doing this so much. When will it be over? And now I'm, I'm actually sad that it's over. I'm very sad that it's over. I mean, there is next week some extra um, Christmas scriptures, but... I'm done. I'm done in this book. There's no more Book of Mormon to read. There's no more supplemental to read. I'm done with the Ludlow. I'm done. It's sad, but I'm gonna start all over in the Doctrine and Covenants. <sighs> I, I don't know if I'm gonna take a break next week. I'll see what I'm feeling. All right. Thanks for coming along with me. Thanks for listening to me. <laughs> I could be annoying at times. I realize this. But um, I appreciate it. And um, I love you all. And I'll talk to you later.